Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to use this little self-contained soundboard. Er, yeah. From Adafruit. It's pretty great. It does, um, it has onboard memory of two megs and it has eight, this one in particular has eight triggers, input output triggers and takes wave or OGG files. That is going to run audio into this tiny little amp, again from Adafruit, super nice. This is a mono amp, so it's not, uh, it'll only run one signal, but it'll run that signal into this teeny tiny, oh, see, there we go. Speaker, desperate to get it in focus there. Whatever. Anyways, there's a little 90 decibel speaker. It's so cute, but it can be pretty loud, which is which is or loud enough, which is the whole point. So these packages both come with the headers and the screw terminals for the speaker. So uh, now I'm going to solder that up. Sound good? Sounds good to me, anyways. So, really quickly, the items you need to actually get this job done is you need wire cutters and strippers. Some breadboard wires to connect your items together. You'll need a soldering iron, pretty uh, pretty important to be able to solder your headers on. The amp, the soundboard, a speaker, some breadboards, and some standard little tactile switches. Okay. I'll put links to all that stuff in the uh, in the description. But that's how you would get started to get this together. Okay. Oh, and uh, a USB to micro USB, mini USB, I don't know. Anyways, the one you use to connect this board. <laughs> I'll get that right too and I'll add a link <laughs> to your laptop or whatever. Okay, that's how you get started. Uh, so, things I'm gonna have to do first is I have to solder the headers onto these items. The soundboards, headers, uh, the soundboard actually has the headers it was provided are way more than I need, so I'm going to have to get those headers split. It's actually really great if you have too many headers because, you know, that's the sort of thing that you run out of and then you're like, oh no, headers. So having too many is better than having too few. So again, so all I'm doing is I'm just putting the header in to where I need it and then I just use my fingers to mark it and then I'm taking a pair of, I'm taking my strippers in this case, player pliers basically and you just twist and it breaks off the header. Um, and that gives me my headers so I can put them into this breadboard. You know, uh, oops, it's a little wider than that. So what this does is, for me, it, oh my god, even wider. It's a wide board. So what this does for me is it keeps my headers straight. My header pins are straight in the board, uh, in the breadboard. I can lay the the board in on top and then I can solder. So I'll probably fast forward this because soldering is only so interesting. Okay, so that's soldered in. Not bad, not a bad job. Um, headers are straight. 
so I just need to repeat this process with the um, with the amp. And there we go. Oops. Okay. So we have our two um, boards soldered and ready to go. Now the interesting thing about the soundboard is that it will work. It has um, it says on here. So it has T3, T1. So it does have triggers already it does have sound files loaded on it so you can test it sort of immediately so that potentially will work i'll be where one minute so with a five volt power supply we can test this immediately by connecting a barrel jack connector to ground and voltage in so there's the ground pin, the VIN. I grabbed a different speaker because the one that I was using, I <laughs> kept trying to strip. The, 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 the wires are so thin that I, I kept stripping it shorter and shorter. Anyways, this is not powerful enough to run the speaker without going through the amp. So I need to hook this up to the amp and then we're and then we'll we'll try again. Okay, I'm just gonna put you on pause here. Or well, here I'll show you. So the um, speaker will screw into the terminals. We'll go ahead and do that because we're just going to shove this into the breadboard anyways. So we definitely want the wires to be in the terminals. And it's easier to put them in if I'm able to move the amp around. So. There we go. So the speaker is now screwed into the terminals. We're going to put this in the breadboard just, just because then it's in place. I'm going to take the power off of this because it's not a really good idea to uh, run power into things as you're hooking them up, just in case. So the first thing to note about the amp is that it requires power as well. It doesn't uh, run on its own. It needs to be powered. It can run off the same power as the board. There is actually, <clears throat> what we would do is we'll just move the board over so we have room to power them both. So here we have the VIN, the voltage in, that can plug directly to the voltage in from the breadboard or from the soundboard from the power supply and then the ground to ground that powers oops sorry that powers the amp then what we do is there's a plus a minus now this is the actual sound that's coming out of the soundboard so a plus is the sound channel so r in this case right channel and A minus is the ground from the channel. You want to ground for the channel itself. You don't want to try to connect to the ground for the for the um, soundboard. So let's plug it back in. So far so good, nothing's exploded. That's a big deal. Let's try this ground thing again, see what happens. So you could hear the sound coming through. thought that there were other sounds in here. Right. Anyways, so that is the basic control. You ground the um, board 
for uh, playing sound. And that was it playing through here, or sorry, playing through the speaker, which I guess I could just stick on there so we can see it. I'll try one more time here. So I'm just going to hook up some buttons now. So here we have our whoa, our buttons. I only connected one button for now just to show you how it works with simple tactile switch. And when the, the pin goes low, the uh, sound is activated. Okay, so I'm just going to load a bunch of sounds onto this board. And then hopefully we, we can see it uh, working. So I have now connected my sound, the soundboard to my laptop. Um, so, uh, yeah, when you connect your soundboard to your laptop or your, anyways, you connect via USB, you end up with the, it loaded in as, as an external drive. And you can see when you first load it in, you got a t00.ogg. That's just a sound file, the sound file that you're using as a left, right, the tester. You can download a demo tracks uh, folder from Adafruit. You just copy and you paste that into your hard drive, your Adafruit's F SFX drive. And you will replace the OGG file that you that it came with and these have different settings random one two three four t zero one ran zero so these keywords are useful if you want to have a whole bunch of different sounds for one of the buttons so once this is connected we'll uh, we'll test them out okay so that's copied over we're going to eject that drive. Okay, now that I've copied the files over to my board, I've, I've stuck down my speaker, which will, it makes it louder because it's not, it acts like a transducer, so it sort of vibrates through the plastic of the breadboard in this case. Uh, everything's wired up. I have all the files given over to the, the board, or copied over to the board, so we can hear the... Track the, seven. Track seven. So that's track six latching. Track six latching. This is based track off of the, the file name. So latch means it loops over and over on its own. Track five dot two. Track five dot zero. Track five dot one. Track five dot two. Track five dot zero. And again, as you have the t as you have the file name set up, it will loop through it will loop through the, the files. So this one is track four hold loop, track four hold loop, track four hold loop. So you actually have to have the, the button pressed for it to play. Track three. Track three. 
plain old track three. Track two. Plain old track two. Track one. Random one. Track one. Random two. Track one. Random four. Track one. Random three. And that's again naming conventions. And just a standard tone that they have. And that's it. That's how the sound board works. So if you were to connect this to a microcontroller like I did for my pro project, you send a, a low signal to the pin and that activates track six latching. And that activates the signal. So it's a great little board. It work would work great for like props, I would think, and, and small little device items. And that's it. Okay.